I am ein eight. I am twenty four years old. I am twenty four years old. I'm twenty four years old. I'm twenty four years old. I ain't twenty four years old. I ain't twenty four years old. Veja como a forma contraída se comporta na frase. Aqui está a contração do verbo am. Aqui a forma normal, forma contraída, forma contraída negativa. Nesse primeiro caso normal, a gente tem duas sílabas. I am. Quando está contraída, torna-se uma sílaba. I'm. Este é o segredo. I am. I'm. Ain't. You are. You're. You are such a sweetheart. You are such a sweetheart. You're such a sweetheart. You're such a sweetheart. He is. He is. He is so handsome. He is so handsome. He's so handsome. He's so handsome. A dica neste ponto é que esse his pode significar outra coisa, não só o he is. Fique tranquilo que a seguir você vai descobrir qual é a outra coisa que pode significar o his. She is. She is. She is very beautiful. She is very beautiful. She's very beautiful. She's very beautiful. They are there. They are such cute kittens. They are such cute kittens. They're such cute kittens. They're such cute kittens. We are we're. We are going to China next month. We are going to China next month. We're going to China next month. We're going to China next month. That is that's. That is that's. That is awesome. That is awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. There is there's. There is the hotel we were looking for. There is the hotel we were looking for. There's the hotel we were looking for. There's the hotel we were looking for. What is? What's? What is? What's? What is the matter? What is the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? Where is? Where's? Where is my car? Where is my car? Where's my car? Where's my car? Who is? Whose? Who is there? Who is there? Who's there? Who's there? Who are? 
Who are? Who are? Who are the people at the next table? 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 Are not. Aren't. They are not coming next week. They are not coming next week. They aren't coming next week. They aren't coming next week. Is not. Isn't. She is not listening to you. She is not listening to you. She isn't listening to you. She isn't listening to you. War not. Warrant. War not. Warrant. They were not invited to the party. They were not invited to the party. They weren't invited to the party. They weren't invited to the party. Was not. Wasn't. Was not. Wasn't. I was not joking when I said that. I was not joking when I said that. I wasn't joking when I said that. I wasn't joking when I said that. Does not. Doesn't. She does not play tennis. She does not play tennis. He doesn't play tennis. He doesn't play tennis. Essa contração é a contração mais popular do inglês. O doesn't. Por isso, grave bem o som dessa contração para você saber a hora que ouvir e quando precisar ler. Doesn't. He doesn't play tennis. Do not, don't. Do not, don't. I do not like cheese. I do not like cheese. I don't like cheese. I don't like cheese. Need not, needn't. Need not. Needn't. É um caso pouco usado, mas acontece. Preste atenção. Needn't. You need not worry about that. You need not worry about that. You needn't worry about that. You needn't worry about that. Did not. Didn't. Did not. Didn't. Aqui está um outro caso super usado em inglês. Esta contração aqui serve para o passado. O auxiliar aqui está no passado. E ele serve justamente para colocar outros verbos no passado. Na negativa, no passado. Didn't. I did not know that. I did not know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Mais uma explicação. Esse didn't aqui está colocando esse no no passado. É negativo e é no passado. Bom é você memorizar que esse didn't, os dois, podem ser entendidos como não, ok? Não sabia. O did, que está no passado, e o no, 
continua no presente. É o caso do passado simples em inglês. Cannot, can't. I cannot understand you. I cannot understand you. I can't understand you. I can't understand you. Could not, couldn't. He could not get his shoes on. He could not get his shoes on. He couldn't get his shoes on. He couldn't get his shoes on. Will not. Want. I will not be able to attend the school. I will not be able to attend the school. I won't be able to attend the school. I won't be able to attend the school. Would not, wouldn't. My father would not ask her. My father would not ask her. My father wouldn't ask her. My father wouldn't ask her. Uma pergunta. Por que que os nativos americanos e britânicos e outros preferem a forma contraída? Para facilitar a vida, a lei do menor esforço. Por isso que você vai ouvir muito mais essa forma contraída. Por isso que você vai ouvir muito mais essa forma contraída, certo? Principalmente quando a conversa for informal. Has not, hasn't. Mary has not finished her homework. Mary has not finished her homework. Mary hasn't finished her homework. Mary hasn't finished her homework. Essa contração hasn't é muito comum. Vale a pena você memorizar esse som hasn't. Tanto na variedade americana quanto em qualquer outra variedade. Memorize. Hasn't. Have not. Haven't. I have not stopped it. I have not stopped it. I haven't stopped it. I haven't stopped it. Had not. Hadn't. I had not thought of that. I had not thought of that. I hadn't thought of that. I hadn't thought of that. Might not, mightn't. I almost wondered if he might not be right. I almost wondered if he might not be right. I almost wondered if he mightn't be right. I almost wondered if he mightn't be right. Must not, mustn't. You must not worry too much about this. You must not worry too much about this. You mustn't worry too much about this. You mustn't worry too much about this. Esse must é um verbo auxiliar, como quase todos, eu diria todos, junta-se também a negativa, ao not. Should not, shouldn't. You should not do things like that. You should not do things like that. You shouldn't do things like that. You shouldn't do things like that. I will. I will. Uma dica interessante. 
é que esse I.O. pode ter a mesma sonoridade do todos em inglês, do all. Então, quando for numa fala descontraída ou relaxada, esse I.O. pode ficar all, all, all. Quando o nativo estiver falando rapidamente, ok? I will be on vacation next week. I will be on vacation next week. I'll be on vacation next week. I'll be on vacation next week. You will. You. I think you will pass the exam. I think you will pass the exam. I think you'll pass the exam. I think you'll pass the exam. He will. He will. He will. He will. I am sure he will help you if he can. I am sure he will help you if he can. I'm sure he'll help you if he can. I'm sure he'll help you if he can. Dica. Esse hill é parecido com a montanha. Hill. Existe uma leve diferença de pronúncia desse hill e do hill, que é a montanha. Ok? Mas na fala rápida, a mesma coisa. I'm sure he'll help you if he can. São os chamados heterônimos. She will. She'll. She will. She'll. She will be there tomorrow, I am sure. She will be there tomorrow, I am sure. She'll be there tomorrow, I'm sure. She'll be there tomorrow, I'm sure. They will. They'll. They will. They'll. I hope they will come to my party. I hope they will come to my party. I hope they'll come to my party. I hope they'll come to my party. I would, I'd. I would, I'd. Dica. Esse I'd é parecido com o outro I'd. Com o outro auxiliar. Tem esse I'd do old e tem o I'd do I had. Não confundi. Mas o contexto vai te ajudar se vai ser um ou se vai ser o outro. I would like a cup of coffee. I would like a cup of coffee. I'd like a cup of coffee. I'd like a cup of coffee. You would. You'd. You'd. O mesmo caso. Esse D pode ser do auxiliar would ou do auxiliar had. Com todas as pessoas. Mas fique atento que você pode é, tirar essa ambiguidade com o sentido da frase. I was afraid you would ask me that. I was afraid you would ask me that. I was afraid you'd ask me that. I was afraid you'd ask me that. He would hid. Hid. He would to go to the cinema tonight. He would to go to the cinema tonight. 
He'd like to go to the cinema tonight. He'd like to go to the cinema tonight. She would. She'd. She would. She'd. She would be a great managing director, don't you think? She would be a great managing director, don't you think? She'd be a great managing director, don't you think? She'd be a great managing director, don't you think? They would. They'd. They would. They'd. They would love to see the film. They would love to see the film. They'd love to see the film. They'd love to see the film. We would. We'd. We would. We'd. We would be grateful for an answer. We would be grateful for an answer. We'd be grateful for an answer. We'd be grateful for an answer. I have. I've. I have. I've. Essa abreviação aqui, contração, é uma das mais populares em inglês, tá ok? Esse V com todas as pessoas, tá? I've, I've, I have, I've. I have been waiting an hour already. I have been waiting an hour already. I've been waiting an hour already. I've been waiting an hour already. You have. You've. You have. You've. You have got to start working harder. You have got to start working harder. You've got to start working harder. You've got to start working harder. They have. They've. They have. They've. They have got painted all over the carpet. They have got painted all over the carpet. They've got painted all over the carpet. They've got painted all over the carpet. It has. It's. It has. It's. Outra ambiguidade. Esse it's pode parecer com o it's do it is. Tranquilo. Não se preocupe que o contexto vai tirar essa ambiguidade. Quando você olhar na frase e eu escutar it's, observe o resto da frase para você saber, é, descobrir se é it's de it has ou it's de it is. It has been over a year since we have done that. It has been over a year since we have done that. It's been over a year since we've done that. It's been over a year since we've done that. Who have? Who have? Who've? Who have? Who've? Who have you asked so far? Who have you asked so far? 
Who've you asked so far? Who've you asked so far? He has his. He has his. O mesmo caso para o it. Na verdade, it, he e she têm o mesmo caso deste apóstrofo e desse s, ok? Da ambiguidade do his seria he is ou he has. O contexto. Fique ligado no contexto. He has worked here for five years. He has worked here for five years. He's worked here for five years. He's worked here for five years. She has. She's. She has. She's. She has been to Japan twice. She has been to Japan twice. She's been to Japan twice. She's been to Japan twice. There has. There has. There's. There has. There's. Olha, um caso interessante, tá? Esse there's a gente aprende demais na escola e nos livros que é a contração do there is, mas pode ser o there has, ok? Fique atento. Não é só para it, he, she e he que há essa confusão, ok? There has been entirely too much said on the subject. There has been entirely too much said on the subject. There's been entirely too much said on the subject. There's been entirely too much said on the subject. That has that's that has that's that has got to be the most ridiculous thing i have ever seen that has got to be the most ridiculous thing i have ever seen that's got to be the most ridiculous thing i've ever seen That's got to be the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. What has? What's? What has? What's? They want a list of what has been stolen. They want a list of what has been stolen. They want a list of what's been stolen. They want a list of what's been stolen. Olha bem, essa situação aqui, dessa contração, do apóstrofo mais o S para essa situação, what's been stolen, não é muito comum para nós aqui, tá? Que recebemos um inglês mais é, o formal. Isso aqui vale muito para as situações informal, situações de fala, essas contrações diferentes que vocês estão vendo aqui. Então, vale muito a pena vocês ficarem atentos a isso. Who has? Whose? Who has? Whose? Who has been chosen? Do you know? Who has been chosen, do you know? Who's been chosen, do you know? Who's been chosen, do you know? 
I had. I'd. I had. I'd. Eu já mencionei para você que tem o I'd para a contração de I owed, ok? I owed pode ser confundido com I had, quando estiver contraído. Mas fique atento ao contexto que você vai saber diferenciar um do outro. I had e I owed são contraídos assim, I'd. I had just got in the bath when the phone rang. I had just got in the bath when the phone rang. I just got in the bath when the phone rang. I just got in the bath when the phone rang. You had. You'd. O mesmo acontece com o you, viu? E os demais pronomes pessoais. Fiquem atentos. You had, you'd. It happened just after you had left the room. It happened just after you had left the room. It happened just after you'd left the room. It happened just after you'd left the room. He had, hid. He had, hid. He had been alone for a long time. He had been alone for a long time. He'd been alone for a long time. He'd been alone for a long time. She had, she'd. She had, she'd. She had already left. She had already left. She'd already left. She'd already left. They had, they'd. They had, they'd. They had better be here on time. They had better be here on time. They'd better be here on time. They'd better be here on time. We had, we'd. We had, we'd. We had better be more careful in the future. We had better be more careful in the future. We'd better be more careful in the future. We'd better be more careful in the future. Who had hood? Who had hood? She wondered who had sent her the mysterious email. She wondered who had sent her the mysterious email. She wondered who'd sent her the mysterious email. She wondered who'd sent her the mysterious email. Let us, let's, let us, let's. Let us go out to dinner. Let us go out to dinner. Let's go out to dinner. Let's go out to dinner. One, two, one. One, two, one. Veja que essa contração não precisou do sinalzinho, do apóstrofo. Existem muitos casos 
em que não é preciso usar apóstrofo. Mas a maioria deles, sim, usa-se o apóstrofo para fazer essas contrações. Do you want to go now? 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 What are you? What are you? Watcha. Watcha. What are you doing? What are you doing? Whatcha doing? Whatcha doing? Kind of. Kind of. Kinda. Kinda. I think it is kind of funny. I think it is kind of funny. I think it's kind of funny. I think it's kind of funny. Do not know. Do not know. Da no. Da no. I do not know what to do. I do not know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me guess. You did not do it. Let me guess. You did not do it. Let me guess. You didn't do it. Let me guess. You didn't do it. Perceba que essa contração é uma escrita mais próxima da fala, ok? Existem muitos casos deste daqui. É apenas uma palinha para você. Let me. Eles falam let me. Aí ficou let me. Let me. Lei do menor esforço, tá? Na conversação do dia a dia. Coisas que se encontra na vida real dos nativos, ok? Não de uma linguagem formal, mas de uma linguagem informal ou relaxada, eu diria. Give me. Give me. Give me. Give me. Can you give me a hand? 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 Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Mais uma questão que eu gostaria de falar para você. Esse sinalzinho, o apóstrofo, às vezes tira uma letra, duas letras ou mais letras. Neste caso, juntou-se duas palavras, é, suprimindo duas letras, o T e o H, ok? Às vezes uma letra, às vezes mais de uma letra. Isn't it? Isn't it? In it? In it? It is wrong, isn't it? It is wrong, isn't it? It's wrong, isn't it? 
It's wrong, in it. Going to. Going to. Gonna. Gonna. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Need to. Need to. Nita. Nita. I need to do it. 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 Got to. Got to. Gotta. Gotta. I have got to go. I have got to go. I've got to go. I've got to go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. You don't really mean that. 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 É isso aí, pessoal. Essa foi a nossa aula de hoje. E eu gostaria que você deixasse um like, que você compartilhasse e comentasse também para que o YouTube é, visse que essa aula é importante, é relevante e você estaria ajudando a gente, colocando aí um gostei e também fazendo algum comentário sobre alguma questão aqui. Compartilhe com seus amigos que estudam inglês. Isso é muito bom e desta forma você vai estar ajudando aqui o nosso canal a crescer. Conto com você. Espero você na próxima. Bye!